You know, I think it's time. As awesome as this front runner half rack system has been, I think it's time to go full rack. Yeah, I'm pretty excited. A couple of years ago, I released a video on installing the Frontrunner Slimline half rack system on the Jeep and it has served me so well. It has carried my tent, it has carried a ton of accessories, but things have changed in the last couple of years, especially with the way I carry equipment. And I think now is the time to upgrade this thing to a full rack to give me a lot more flexibility. In fact, let me go show you my setup really quick. So here is my roof rack setup. It's the Slimline 2 half rack system from Front Runner, and I went with the half rack because obviously half racks are gonna be a lot more affordable than going with the full rack. And at the time, all I really needed my rack for was to mount my rooftop tent to. And I didn't wanna get a full rack knowing that the majority of it is gonna be covered by the rooftop tent. Well, my needs have changed since then and my cargo has changed since then. And if you look over here, we just have this humongous gap underneath the tent and we have about a foot of unused space in the front of the tent. Even with the accessories that I have on the side, I have my Light Force Rock 20 lights, I have my shovel, I have my WeBoost right behind it. It's all been limited to the length of my rack. Now the great thing about the Slimline rack system is its modularity. When I was speaking with Frontrunner at the Southeast Adventure Vehicle Expo, they had asked me if I'd ever consider moving to a full rack and I said I absolutely have been thinking about it. I just didn't know if I could buy those parts to extend this rack and they said they actually sell kits to do that. Now they don't advertise that on the website. However, if you've ever bought the Slimline half rack or three fourth rack, you can definitely call them and they'll sell you the kit to upgrade that to a full rack system. They created that kit because they know that a lot of times people buy the half rack or three fourth rack and then their needs change and they want to go full rack. So kits are available for you to upgrade that and that is what we are doing today. Now disclaimer, Front Runner did not give this to me for free. I did buy this with my own money, although they did give me a pretty steep discount and for that I am truly appreciative. Alright, so what exactly do you need to do to upgrade your half rack system to a full rack system? It's not really a lot. For the most part, the rack will stay the same. It's still going to be held to the vehicle using that same bracket and we don't need to remove the existing rack to do that. All we're doing is extending those side rails that all this stuff is attached to all the way to the front, adding a couple more slats, reusing that same front piece that's there along with the windscreen that's right below it. And then towards the front, they give you posts that are gonna attach to the A-pillar down here. And that's really all that is. We don't even need to remove the tent or the entire rack completely because it's still going to be anchored in the same spots. All right, now that we know what needs to be done, let's go start taking out some parts. To make the install easier, I started by removing the four corner pieces of the rack and then all the accessories mounted to the side rails. With everything cleared off, I removed all the bolts underneath to hold the side rails to the slats of the rack. All right, so the side rails have been removed and as you can see, it has nothing to do with the integrity of the rack. It's just a side rail that holds accessories for you. Now we may have run into our very first problem. So this is considered the front slat. It's what's at the front of this entire roof rack here. And normally when you go and extend the rack, you'll just remove this and then bring it to the new front over there and then you replace this with a regular slat like this and you're good to go. Well, my problem is that this rooftop tent is currently mounted to the slat. So two bolts for the rooftop tent, I don't know if you can see that in there, is mounted to this thing here. So I'm gonna need to figure out a way to basically lift part of the tent at least to get it off the slat, then remove the slat, move it to the front, put the new slat in that looks like this, and then reconnect the tent to this again. Now I spent a good amount of time really thinking how I would solve this problem without having to remove the tent. I decided that the best way to do this is to remove just the bolts holding the tent brackets to the front slats and then lifting the tent so I can slip a 2x4 underneath the tent to prop it up slightly. This lifted the tent just enough for me to slide the tent bolts off the T-rails.
With the tent supported by those 2x4s, I proceeded with removing the front slat. By the way, this is a great time to clean it up while it's off the vehicle. Alright, so here's the part we just removed the front of the rack. We're going to go ahead and put this aside for now and I'll talk to you about the rest of the parts that you're going to need. Alright, so here are all the parts you're going to get when you order the roof rack extension kit. They basically give you everything you need, even all the hardware necessary to extend your rack from a half or three quarters rack all the way to a full rack. Now, if you are running a Jeep, you're going to get these as well. These are your A-pillar mounts. They'll basically mount to your A-pillar like so. And then you are going to add that front slat that I just showed you to these and that's what's going to hold up the front end of your new full roof rack. Along with this, you're also going to get the side rails. Now, I thought the side rails were going to be like one huge long piece, but they actually give it to you in two pieces. So the shorter one is going to be towards the back and you're going to need to attach the longer pieces, which is right over here to that and they give you the hardware to join these two together. Now along with this kit, you're also gonna get four additional slats. The slats you already have now, they're just giving you four more. On this table, I only have three because I actually already took one and I put it in place of the front slat that we just removed. Reason why is because I wanted to go ahead and get the tent locked down. I don't like the tent sitting there propped up with those two by fours. I wanna go ahead and get that thing secure before I move on with everything else. In fact, let me just go ahead and show you what I've done. All right, so here's a slat that replaces that front slat we had on earlier. Now, normally we just take a bolt, put it through the T-rails and then kind of drop it onto the bracket. Well, we can't necessarily do that here because the tent bracket gets in the way. So we really only have this really thin area to kind of get this slat through. But easy enough, I just took a bolt, loosely put it on this bracket as well as on the other side, then took the slat and kind of slid that bolt through the T-rails all the way to the other side, maneuvered it on the other side to get that situated as well. And then I took another bolt, put it through these slats and then lined it up with the holes of the tent brackets there. So all we have to do right now is kind of lift the tent one more time, get those two by fours out and then let the tent kind of just fall back onto those bolts and then keep everything loose until we can get everything else put on. Then we can go ahead and tighten everything. With that problem resolved, it's time to actually get started on installing the extra pieces to convert this thing to a full rack. First step is to remove the two upper bolts at the bottom of your A-pillars. You won't be reusing these bolts anymore, but I would suggest storing them away somewhere in case you decide to remove the roof rack in the future. Now it's time to mount the pillar brackets that hold up the front of your roof rack. You'll use the longer bolts with the kit followed by a washer, the brackets themselves, and then the spacers. The spacers keep the brackets from rubbing up against your vehicle and damaging the paint. Now take the front slat we removed and relocate it to these brackets, again keeping things loose for adjustment. Next to assemble the side rails by joining one of the short rails to a longer one using the provided brackets. Slip both brackets in place and then slip the M8 nut into the rail. With all these parts, it can get tricky to line up all the holes so here's a hack. Use your allen key to line up the holes and then push it all the way through. Then from the other end, as you push the bolt through, it will guide it through all the holes and into the nut while pushing out the allen key. Now you just have to tighten. Now slip another M8 nut into that same rail, push the two rails together, slide the nut over and repeat that hack to line up the holes. Tighten everything up and that completes one side. Now repeat for the other rail. Starting only on one side, put the side rail on. I would suggest just putting a bolt loosely at the very back and it will act as a hinge as you line up the side rail with the rest of the slats. Once all the slats are seated, I just added one bolt in the middle and one at the very front. Now that I know the slats are all lined up evenly, I was finally able to tighten the tent bracket bolts and take care of that issue. From here, I added the rest of the bolts to secure the side rails to all the slats. Don't tighten, but definitely get the bolt started so you'll know it's lined up. I'm going to be adding the other slats to the front of the rack, but I didn't want them dangling at an angle, so I took some 2x4s so one end can rest on them while I bolt them up on the other side. 
Since the space under the tent will be unused anyway, I decided to use all the extra slats for the front to create a flat platform. Now go ahead and place the rail on the other side and again line it up to the other slats and place the bolts. I will say this is when it got a bit tricky as there are a ton of slats. I was also having a difficult time gathering the new slats and placing them inside the side rail slots without one or the other coming out. If you're having issues, seriously, take a break once in a while so you don't drive yourself crazy. Here's where you'll spend some time doing some adjustments to make sure the rack is seated properly and centered to the vehicle. I had to go back and forth from one side to the other making necessary tweaks. But once everything was lined up and all the bolts were in their place with the thread started, now I could go ahead and tighten all the bolts. Another hack, don't tighten the bolts where accessories will be mounted as you will be removing them again anyway to mount those accessories. From there, I went and put back all the accessories and I was done. Alright, so the rack has been installed. I now have a full rack and I think it looks great. Makes it feel so much fuller. Uh, got the brackets, the pillar brackets, put up. Now as far as the slats, uh, I normally, normally they tell you to go one every other, but since this is unusable space here, I decided to put all the slats up at the front so I have like a really flat base. So going to a full rack basically gave me about 13 inches more of space. Space that wasn't being used before. Now that might not seem very significant but you can pack a lot in this area. I was able to put some chocks there and now I'll be putting my cub pack right there and then I put some of the uh, o-rings that a uh, front runner has one on each side. I'll be able to put my cub pack here and then I'll put a bag or duffel bag over there that's waterproof and then strap the whole thing down with some stratchets. WeBoost is now on this side. It now has its own area. It's not kind of sharing space with the shovel like I had it before. And what's great about this is once I bring the mast up, it won't get in the way of the tent. It'll basically clear everything. So that's awesome. I also spread out my Light Force Rock 20s. I have one at the back one at the front so I'll have a lot more coverage. Now over on the other side nothing much has changed at all. The shovel is still in the same spot where it was but at least now it's just cleaner. There's not a lot of stuff going on on this side and that is pretty much the full roof rack from Front Runner. <laughs> So this is what I would call a hard, easy install. Like in theory, it's very simple. It's just removing the shorter side rails, adding longer ones on, moving the front slat to the very front, adding some A-pillar brackets, adding some slats, and you're pretty much done. And all the hardware is available to you. What makes it difficult is lining up all those slats to the new rail because there are a lot of slats and you gotta get them all lined up on each hole, which and some of them was super simple, but there were others where I just could not get the bolt through. This would have gone much smoother and much faster if I didn't have a rooftop tent, because then I wouldn't have had to maneuver that tent off that particular slat, and I could have probably just removed the entire rack off the support brackets it's on now, assemble it in the garage, and then put the whole thing back on. But was it worth it? Absolutely. I feel like the rig just looks so much more complete now. I mean, it was fine before, and it did its job. It's just... The, that huge gap underneath the front part of the tent and that empty space in the front that wasn't even being used just kind of bothered me a little bit. But at least now, 
the rig just looks full and complete and I now have extra cargo in the front to load more stuff. Now I will say that one of the main reasons I went with the half rack to begin with, aside from it being more cost effective and all I needed it to do was hold down my rooftop tent, was that when it comes to Jeeps, I've never been a fan of, and not just with front runner, but with any full roof rack systems, I've never been a fan of those humongous brackets that come down your A pillar. Like I wanted something a little bit cleaner. I wish they would give us like a, a rain gutter mount option, right? Like instead of having those A pillars, you just have mounts on the front that will clamp to your rain gutters in the front because technically the entire load of the rack is already on the back and it's locked down to your roll cage and that's where you put your rooftop tent and all that. So all the load is already secured in the back. We just need something in the front to kind of hold that part of the rack down a little bit and it may not necessarily need a lot of strain. Now, if you're the kind of person that's gonna load up your rack from front all the way to the back, then yes, you will need those brackets. But for the rest of us, where all the loads towards the back and the front might just have some light stuff, then it would be a good thing to have an option where we can ditch those brackets and just have like a rain gutter mount type of thing. For example, with the Forerunner, Front Runner has non-drillable options where the back of the roof rack is secured to the factory bolts, but the front, they have like a strong adhesive that just kind of holds the front of it down so that you don't have to drill into your Forerunner. I wish they would do something like that with the Jeep so that we have just a cleaner rack at the top without those humongous brackets coming down your A-pillar. I think that would be awesome. But yeah, I'm not going to waste your time and do a full review on this rack. I've done it already before. Just follow that link in the description below. But I did want to make an announcement that we are coming so close to 10,000 subscribers here at Baptism Overland. And I've got a huge giveaway planned for that. So please make sure you stay tuned for the official video telling you about that giveaway. We do have some huge companies that are giving to this giveaway like Front Runner. Stay tuned for that. It's probably the biggest giveaway I've done yet. Now, for those of you who support me on Patreon, unfortunately there will not be a live stream after this video is released because this video is being released on Easter and I am spending this time with family, but we can definitely discuss it in next week's live stream. For the rest of you, please follow us on Patreon and for less than $3 a month you get access to these live streams that we do right after the video to discuss that video a little bit more. But if you like this video, please make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to click that notification bell so you can be notified of when we release new videos and as always don't forget to follow us on instagram at baptism overland my name is asia samson and i will see you next time happy easter everyone